Welcome to Redbeard Radio. I'm Brian Keith. And one thing you may know about me, given the name of the show, is that I'm a redhead. What you don't know is that being a redhead means being isolated and excluded and different your entire life. Ninth grade Spanish class, we walk in a class and we're learning about hair colors. And the teacher always says, ¿Quién es el rojo? Who's the redhead? And everyone points at me, right? Because I'm always different. Now, I think that actually helps on the entrepreneurial journey, the whole being different thing, because you're already more different from everybody else. And if you thought this episode was going to be all about being a redhead, you're only half correct. We have here with us Katie Clark, also a redhead, who happens to also be involved in this partner stack business that gets leads for your business. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. Katie, welcome to Redbeard Radio. Awesome. Brian, thank you so much for having me. Now, I've interviewed redheads for over a decade and not for the podcast, just asking them when I meet redheads. And I say, what was it like as a kid when you had red hair? And I could tell you what, what women who I ask this question to always say, but I'm going to ask you, and then you're going to say exactly what I'm already about to say. What was it like having red hair? What did you get told a lot when you were a young girl? Um, well, funny story. I come from an Italian family. And so oh. my dad used to say that my real father was the mailman. And that was before I understood what sarcasm was. Whoa. Um, <laughs> because I'm the only redhead in my whole family. So I, I'd be wow. very surprised and impressed if that was the answer that every woman that you've spoken no, to has given. Actually. Yeah. See, well, I like to be a little different. Except for you, <laughs> all redheaded young girls get told how beautiful they are and how beautiful their hair is. Mm-hmm. All young redheaded boys get made fun of. See, I looked like a dehydrated cactus for most of my young <laughs> life. So I fall into that. Ew, bucket, I think more than anything wow. else. Wow. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks, folks. My uh my red beard interview series on being a redhead. We have a new data point. <laughs> I'm the outlier. <laughs> you are an outlier. Mm-hmm. Now we met at the Keep Convention here recently, and we had mm-hmm. a great conversation, Katie, around getting leads mm-hmm. for six-figure businesses. And I was really curious to talk to you because mm-hmm. the question of how do you find leads for your business? Mm -hmm. Assuming you already have capacity to sell your product, assuming what you're selling is already excellent. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a question of how do you get new people in the door who are actually qualified? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some magical segue to connect this to being a redhead. I'll think of it later, folks. (laughs) Just give me some time. Uh, But I'm really curious to talk with you about that uh, Mm -hmm. and how to get more leads, qualified leads. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the business owners I work with, we spend way too much time on leads that in retrospect, we should have never been talking to. It's a yeah. very common problem, and you have a solution for that problem. And as a result of this episode, besides better understanding the social lives of redheads during childhood, <laughs> uh, our listeners are also going to have a better sense mm-hmm. of another channel to get leads. So Katie, can you tell us about your company? Yeah. So I work for a wonderful company called PartnerStack, and I have been there for almost three years at this point. Um, and I manage our team of onboarding consultants. And what PartnerStack does primarily is we provide a one-stop shop for partnerships uh, for B2B SaaS companies. So we support a variety of partnership types. Um, Really, it's like affiliates, uh, referral partners, and reseller partners. And that that world of qualified leads you're talking about, that is the referral program. And honestly, the number one thing that you can do to make sure that you are getting quality leads is make it easy for your partners to refer for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when yeah. I say partners, that's, that's kind of a, a loose definition, um, cause partners can really be anybody. I think a lot of companies do the right thing in that they look to their existing customer base for new referrals, because there's nobody who can be a better advocate for you than somebody who's already using you and can understand the value that you drive. Yeah. Almost all my, for my Redbeard consulting company almost all my businesses referrals and has been for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I look at that and I say, wow, people love referring me. This means that everything's wonderful. Right. (laughs) And then I also look at, well, how the heck am I going to scale that? Mm -hmm. It's harder to scale when all of your business is coming from referrals. And that was one of the things at the convention I was excited about from my company lenders online training, where I thought about, we've already worked with so many banks and credit unions nationwide. Mm -hmm. We've already worked with so many of them, but what about the ones that have never heard of us? Mm-hmm. How do we get in front of them if they don't even know our story? And you talked mm-hmm. about how many different referral partners 
you had that might mm-hmm. potentially have our ideal customer in their database. Yeah, And I'd absolutely. love to hear a bit more about that, about how you target that. If I tell you, okay, so Lenders Online Training, we do credit analysis training for mm-hmm. uh, banks and credit unions up to $200 billion in assets. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's nice. That's a, that's, a, that's a description. But how do you translate that? And how mm-hmm. do you translate that into warm, qualified leads or even direct sales through your partner ecosystem? Yeah. So we have this incredible uh, marketplace that has kind of sprung up Mostly, mostly organically. And it's any program that exists on partner stack, every single one of their existing partners now lives in our ecosystem. And the other side is that people can just join our ecosystem or our marketplace, you know, organically themselves. So when I last checked, I think we have well over 65,000 active members right now. And the reason that they're in that, that ecosystem or that space is because they actively have people who want to buy things they know who to refer uh, to your business. They know who is going to make the best customer of yours. And so they're in that marketplace looking for these programs to be a part of. The partner stack marketplace itself, the way that we kind of configure it, uh, is that we allow you to list your business under different sorts of categories or headings to make it easier to find you. And one of the things that we are focusing in on this year is really just increasing the quality of connections that we have. So We are working to better identify who exactly is in our marketplace, um, what makes programs successful, and then how do we take that step further in actually connecting your businesses with these partners that we know are going to be the top performers for you. When I hear 65,000 partners, I think, well, but the vast majority of those folks both have no, they don't understand and they can't understand exactly what we do at Lenders Online Training. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think if we even got 10 referral partners from you, on a regular mm-hmm. basis to send us a few clients a year, that's more mm-hmm. than enough business. Like that's yeah. huge. And once one starts working with us, they'd never leave. Exactly. So if I only, I only need 10 referral partners out of that 65,000, how do you mm-hmm. help me figure out who the 10 are? So I'm not wasting my time talking to mm-hmm. potential affiliates that aren't actually a good fit. Yeah. So there's a couple different things that we can employ. And honestly, the easiest one is just gating the access to your program with an application form. Like six to seven very basic questions because you yourself know what is going to make an effective partner and what isn't. Um, Mm -hmm. So you can qualify those people who are expressing interest with those application forms to better figure out like who they are, what they stand for, who their existing market is. Are they familiar with your business? Do they work with people who are in the same space? Um, And use that as kind of that first qualifying into, yes, you'd like to have a partnership with this person or no, they're just not the right fit. We also have a team of people right now who work with these top performing uh, partners in our marketplace. Um, and again, one of the things that we're working on this year is is just getting better at connecting you with these people. So figuring out from your side, what are the requirements of a program for you to work with these people that are consistently driving like millions of dollars in revenue for these programs? And then of this list of partners that we have, who has the skill set that's going to benefit the stage that your business is in right now? How does my sales commission relate to the list? Because I have my sales team inside. Mm-hmm. If I'm just getting a hot lead, then I still have to go pay someone to close it. Mm-hmm. What are my choices if I just want to go say, hey, go close the deal for me, Katie. Mm-hmm. I'll do the fulfillment and I'll just pay the sales commission. Does it go to partner stack? Does it go to the affiliate? Mm-hmm. How does that work? Yeah. So partner stack automates the entire process start to finish. So basically we set up an integration with your, your CRM, your transaction source of truth. And we use logic within partner stack to identify what commissions your partners are earning. So that's a very fancy way of saying you send us data, we bill you an invoice, and then we automatically pay your partners out. Now, does that change at all? Because I I have my my flagship program, okay, Mm -hmm. so about a thousand bucks. But I also could sell individual little bits of it as more of an entry level offer. Mm -hmm. If I had people who thought, yeah, I want to go sell a a $50 or $100 program Mm -hmm. and then potentially upsell that into a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. How does Partner Stack interact with those kinds of more complex sales cycles? Yeah, so uh, the, I guess, short answer is pretty easily. Um, We can do a lot with rewards. It's basically whatever information you're sending us, uh, we can create logic around that to ensure that your partners are paying out what they're, what they're owed. So like right now, some of the most common commission structures that I'm seeing is either a lifetime rev share uh, for the account. So as long as that customer is active, that partner continues to earn Mm -hmm. uh, with little bonuses. Like, you know, maybe this partner submits a lead, that lead becomes qualified and you want to give them an extra bonus, like hundred dollars. 
for, for submitting like a, a quote unquote good lead. Um, mm. We can base the commission off of, you know, maybe the, the amount uh, that that deal is worth. So if it's below a certain threshold, they get 10%. If it's above a certain threshold, they actually get 30%. And maybe they get that 30% for longer because it was a better deal. Uh, so there's just, there's really lots of ways that we can incentivize your partners um, and, and kind of fit the needs of your business with the way that we issue those rewards out. How long does it take once I come up with my survey questions to help whittle mm -hmm. down all the possible partners to the folks who actually do business with the people I want to be doing business with? Mm -hmm. How long does it take to get everything organized to where I'm actually seeing leads or even sales mm -hmm. come in the door? Maybe this is not the answer you're looking for, but a lot of that is really dependent on you. Um, partnerships are a great way of increasing like global reach and revenue without increasing headcount, but mm -hmm. nothing good in life is ever easy. Uh, you do want to make sure that you're putting a little bit of the work in and setting the program up correctly to make sure that your partners are not just joining, but they're engaging and they're staying active as like for as long as they're involved in that program. Well, tell me this, Katie, yeah. what if I have one of my internal salespeople is partners at the kind of platform where I could hand the problem of setting everything up, filling it with good collateral, and I could hand it to one of my sales team and say, hey, here's this thing. You get a percentage of whatever the partner stack leads to come in. <laughs> Just set it up. <laughs> do people do that? Does that work? You know what? If they have done that, no one's ever been totally honest with me about it. Um, but when you join Partner Stack, and that's kind of like the whole thing that, that my team does, is you have us as your professional consultants. So mm -hmm. we are going to guide you through the setup of a successful program. All that we do is focused on making sure that you have a solid foundation for a successful and a scalable program. Um, and, you know, low key brag, it's one of the things that our company is, is the most well known for is how effective our onboarding is. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited about the possibility of having leads that involve less work to acquire them. Uh, mm -hmm. And then like that's, you think about the co customer acquisition costs is for many companies, the biggest cost they have. Mm -hmm. And if we can go whittle that down even by half, then yeah. that's a big increase in profit margin. One last question, Katie, what Please. size of companies tend to hire partner stack and see the most success? You know what? It's actually really funny that you asked me that because we just did a whole deep dive on this on Friday. And the answer is all of them. Um, we work with SMB vendors. We work with mid-market vendors. I primarily now work with our enterprise level vendors and each one of them sees success. Um, and obviously the needs of the programs are all very different, but we have sort of like a, a criteria of what's going to make a best fit vendor for us. Um, and again, that's usually like B2B SaaS companies. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's really incredible to me to see how, you know, a, a, a three person tech company can see success the same way that like a thousand person enterprise payment provider company would see. And that's kind of the, the real power of partnerships. Amazing, Katie. Where can folks go if they want to go talk more with your team to find out if this is the right tool for them? Uh, you can go to partnerstack.com, I believe is our main website. We have a lovely call to action there to get in touch with one of our very talented sales teams. Um, feel free to find me on LinkedIn if you'd like as well. And I'm always happy to chat things, partnerships and partner stack. Um, and those are probably your best too, but you can also check us out on G2 for reviews if there's anything that you're curious about and kind of want to see, you know, what somebody who doesn't work at partner stack would say about us. <laughs> Wonderful, Katie. Thanks for being on Redbeard Radio. Yeah, thanks for having me.